His hand closed on my airline as I fought for breath inside my diving helmet. The suit pressed tight against me as I used up what little air was left. I had to break his grasp. I had to if I was going to live. This is Deep Water, a sea story of the one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. High Adventure, the top of the world in action drama for men. Brought to you by Scholten, makers of Old Spice aftershave lotion. For that top of the world feeling after every shave. Cool, clean, and refreshing as the ocean. That may sound a little bit poetic, but I'd be willing to bet that's the way you'll feel about it when you use Old Spice aftershave lotion. You'll find there's a wake-up freshness about Old Spice lotion that adds real pleasure to your morning shave. And you'll agree with me that Old Spice lotion is the perfect finish for a shave. Uncomfortable razor burn vanishes instantly, and your face feels cool and smooth. Old Spice lotion has a clean, fresh, masculine scent that men prefer, and the handsome ship-decorated bottles are a pleasure for a man to see and to use. No wonder more men buy Old Spice than any other aftershave lotion at a dollar. Try Old Spice aftershave lotion when you shave tomorrow morning, and you'll use it every time you shave. Now to the high adventure story, Deep Water, written and directed by Robert Monroe and told by the man who lived it, Mark Johnson. I guess Liz and I were meant for each other, corny as it sounds. I never thought she'd wait for me with the war and everything, but she did. That's the kind of gal she is. Not that I didn't expect to come back. Navy salvage diver isn't exposed to terrific danger, at least not from bullets anyway. It was just that there were so many other guys that wanted her. But when I stepped off the train in Grand Central Station, there she was, and it was just like I'd never been away. We were married inside of a week, and the world looked like one big, beautiful oyster. The war was over, we were in love, and there didn't seem to be anything that could stop us. I'd done some diving before the war, and Liz had taken a crack at it, too. We'd always talked about hunting for sunken treasure in the Caribbean or someplace, and, well, we just started making plans right away. We bought a surplus PT boat, ripped out the heavy engines, and stuck in a diesel so the two of us could handle it. We got a hold of a couple of surplus diving rigs, stocked up, and took off. First month didn't net us anything, but we were having fun, so what was the difference? We've been out for a week, and we're heading back into Puerto Plata for supplies. Take it easy. What? Take it easy. Well, that's a fine way for a sailor to talk. It's supposed to say slack off. What? Nothing. Well, take it easy and watch what you're doing. What are you going to do, rewrite the book? I can't hear you. All right, all right. Hang on. All right, jump up and get the forward line. I how you doing? Got it. All right, I'll get the aft line. Okay. Need any help? No, I got it. Now, what were you saying? I said you're the best-looking sailor in the whole Navy. Bet you didn't. Honest. Bet you were being critical again. No, I wasn't. What'd I say wrong? Nothing. Come on, what'd I say? Nothing, honey. All right, smarty, just for that, I won't cook your dinner for you. <laughs> in the Navy, it's chow. Dinner chow. What's the difference? You gotta take me out. I was going to anyway. Oh, tired of my cooking already, huh? <laughs> Get down and put on your face. I'm going just like this. Oh, that's what I love about you. You're so formal. Come on, I'm star. Where to? Joe's? Perfect. Hey, honey, look at that cruiser. Where? Next wharf. Isn't she a beauty? Yeah, what is it? Uh, Chris Craft, I think. Mm, that's something. Come on, let's go and see it, huh? Over my hungry stomach. Oh, now, We'll Liz. come back after we eat. Hey, women. Stop looking like an abused setter. I'm hungry. <laughs> All right. Feel okay? Mm-hmm. Happy? Mm-hmm. You? Couldn't be more. Come on. Hey, Joe, we're back. Oh, Senor Johnson, please, please, my name is Jose. That's what I said, Joe. No, 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 Jose. Yeah, that's what I said. Stop it, Mark. Well, that's what... Stop it. <laughs> Thank you, Senor. Uh, now dinner, see? Si? Ciao. Uh, what's this? Dinner. Oh, see. Si. The table in the window? Sure, it's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And now, 
what will you have? I want a huge lobster and any vegetables you've got. Ah, senor. The same? Do lobster and... The way she eats, you'd never think she blew up a couple of days ago, would you, Jose? What is this blew up? Oh, it's nothing, Jose. I was down below, my exhaust valve stuck, and my suit blew up just like a balloon. I popped up the surface. Now you go get our dinner, huh? Blew up, chow. <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that old guy. You shouldn't tease him. Ah, he doesn't mind. I know, hey, but you... excuse me, but did I hear someone say something about blowing up? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. You're Mark Johnson, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm Harry Paulson. How do you do? This is my wife. Hello. Well, Mrs. Johnson, I've been waiting for you. Oh? Yeah, you see, uh, when I heard you were doing some diving, well, I used to dive myself. Oh, well, pull up a chair. Thank you. Hey, I noticed you stopped and looked at my boat on the way up. That Chris Craft yours? Yeah, it is. Oh, hey, that's some sled. Thank you. What'll she do? Well, I never really opened her up, but they claim she's good for 38. Wow. Like to look it over after dinner? Oh, and how? Okay, honey? Now, aren't you glad you waited? Yeah. Uh, who blew up? Uh, oh, that was nothing. I was just kidding Liz here. Wasn't a joke to me. Well, what happened? Well, her exhaust valve jammed, and before she could do anything, she blew topside. Well, how deep? It was only about 10 fathoms. Uh, I've seen divers get the bends in 10 feet of water, much less 60 or 70. Well, Liz here's tough. I put her right down again and decompressed her slowly. It was nothing. Yeah, you were lucky, Mr. Johnson. Oh, I don't know. What are you diving for? Anything we find. Jose said you were working Silver Shoals. He did? <laughs> the plate fleet. That's uh, what everyone's after. Yeah, I guess so. How much is supposed to be down there? 19 million, they say. Oh, I made a try for it myself once. <laughs> Well, I wonder what's keeping Joe with the food. Don't be impatient. It takes time to broil a lobster. Yeah. I'd like to join up with you, Johnson. Oh, well, yeah, we really I, don't I know these waters pretty well. I think I might be useful. Oh, it isn't that. Besides, I... I'm an experienced diver. Yeah, I know, but... Well, what do you say? <sighs> well, you see, this is sort of a honeymoon for us. Oh, I understand. Why not, Mark? Huh? I mean it. Mr. Paulson uh, Look, could... call me Harry, huh? He could help a lot. How? frightens me a little when you're down there, if anything should happen to you. Well, I just don't know enough about it yet. Well, Liz, this is our... I know, but we're an old married couple now. I'd be a lot happier. You mean that? Yes, Mark. Oh, let, let's forget the whole thing, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up. No. If it's all right with Liz, it's all right with me. Well, I feel funny No about need the whole... to, no need to. It's all set. You sure? Sure, sure. Okay, Liz? Sure, honey. I better get my gear together. When are we shoving off? First thing in the morning, as soon as we're stocked. I'll be ready. But don't forget to stop over and see the boat after dinner. Kind of tired. Think I'll go right to bed. Well, look, maybe... Uh, Mark will be over, though. You better count me out, too, Paulson. Okay. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah. Sure. Liz and I didn't talk much that night when we got back to the boat, but after we turned out the light, I lay there thinking, and I decided I'd been pretty much of a horse's neck to act the way I did. Maybe Liz was right. After all, she was a woman, and I guess they worry about things that never enter a man's head. Made up my mind I was going to apologize first thing in the morning. When I woke up, I looked at my watch and realized I'd overslept an hour. I looked over at Liz's bunk, but it was empty. She wasn't anywhere in the boat either. Funny, she'd never done that before. I ducked into the galley and got the coffee going. There's one... Two, next three. Now a match. Yeah. Oh, blessed little. Did you handle all of that? Yeah, it's got it. Pile some more on me, huh? Yes, all right. Come on. Okay, you And I do. Watch your step now. Oh, I know that. I'll help you. Oh, thanks. Uh, anytime. Mm, that's not hot. Yeah. Come on. Morning, sleepyhead. So you finally got up, huh? Morning, Mark. Hello. Don't I get kissed? Coffee will be ready in a minute. <laughs> it's always an old grouch in the morning. Where will I put these things? Oh, I'm sorry. On the bench over there. Phew. They were getting heavy. How's the coffee Ugh. coming? I'll take care of it. Don't be so gloomy. Oh, uh, what a day, Liz. Honey, if you think Jose is funny at night, you ought to see him in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you two get on beautifully. You could grumble away at each other to your heart's content. <laughs> he wouldn't sell us everything we wanted. He said it wasn't fit food for the sea. <laughs> Joe's only been open for 15 minutes. Huh? I've been up for a half an hour. It's taking that coffee so long. It's ready. Good. I think we've got everything. We can shove off whenever you say. Thanks. 
How'd you make this? Two to a cup. What's the matter with it? Nothing, dear. It's very good. Tastes all right to me. Well, thanks. What do you say? Shove off? Yeah, I guess so. You take it easy, Liz. I'll, uh, I'll get the lines. Hmm, gonna live like a queen with two men aboard. Come on, Mark. Yeah. You handle the engine okay? No, I think so. We'll holler when you're ready, huh? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Clear on the bow. Clear on the stern. Okay, Mark, take her away. Out clear. Hey, you can really handle this thing. Thanks. Nice takeoff, Skipper. Yeah. Honestly, Mark. Well, where to? I don't know. But we'd go out to the shoals, just kind of look around. Oh, that's no way to go treasure hunting. No? Look, according to my information, the last contact in 1935 was made at 7010-2050. There's been a lot of dives since then, but that was the last one that really brought anything up. Well, let's start there. Of course, the tides have probably moved the wreck some, but it's worth a try. Okay? Okay. Good. Where am I going to bunk? Up forward in the forecastle. I'll go stow my gear. Bring you some blankets in a minute. I'll come up and spell you as soon as I get settled, Mark. Really, Mark, don't you think you're being a little silly? Am I? I think you are. You better go up and take care of your guest. All right. I will. <laughs> We find something today. Yeah. There. The belt too tight? No. Okay, Liz, start the pump. I still think I ought to go down. Well, you've been down every day for a week. And on your feet. <clears throat> You'd think we'd find something in two weeks. Yeah. Pressure's up. <sighs> Nothing to it today, not more than 100 feet of water. I know. Grab the ladder. Right. Okay. Yep. Here comes your lid. Intake. Check. Exhaust. Check. Check. Yeah. No, I think the thing will be How you doing, Mark? Where's Liz? Oh, she went below. Why? Nothing. <laughs> I'll handle you. Uh-huh. I'll give you your 25-foot levels. Okay. Yeah, there's your first one. All right. How are you feeling? Getting cold. You're lucky. Like an oven up here. I know. Give me more air. Okay. Not too much. That's 50. Right. How's your visibility? Not bad. Tell better when you get the bottom. Yeah. More air. Take it easy. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but... More air. Okay. There's 75. Right. Want to rest a minute? No. Start easing off. Check. Down yet? No. More air. You're getting... More air. Yet. Nope. You're out at a hundred now. I keep feeding. Right. <sighs> Bottom. Good. How's visibility? About 50 feet. Now how's the bottom? Sandy. Level. Slopes off to the south. Uh -huh. Coral reef north. Lots of vegetation. See anything? No. Look, keep my lines taut. I don't want to get stuck in this sand. Right. How's it feel? Well, it seems firm. No. You got my lines up? Yeah. I'm moving out. Take it easy. How you doing? Okay. Wait. What's the matter? You all right? 
Yeah, shark. He didn't see me. You want to come up? No, no, he's gone. I remember once off Florida. Now keep I... my lines up. Yeah. It's tough going. You see anything yet? No. As soon as I get out around this reef. Take it easy. Only been down ten minutes. Want to get a look down the slope. Watch your ear. Yeah. Uh, a couple of feet more. Paulson. Yeah? Something up ahead. What? I can't tell yet. Look like a ship? Yeah, it might be. Come on up. What? We'll both go down this afternoon. You're crazy. Now, come on. No. Okay. I'm getting closer. See it yet? I see it. Yeah. It's a ship, all right. What kind? I can't tell. Topside's all gone. Hull's half buried. Get closer. Yeah. The high quarter deck. That's it. Must be. <coughs> What's the matter? Air. What? I'm losing air. Harry, the pump's down. <coughs> what? Give me air. Paulson. Pump stop. Must be on gas, huh? <coughs> Give me air. Harry. Yeah. Air. Hang on, Mark. Uh, there. Mark. Uh, Mark. Uh, Excitement and danger when a man is trapped in the treacherous depths of the sea and his thin lifeline in the hands of a stranger. But excitement and danger are nothing new here, for these are the keynotes of high adventure. You know, I feel a little out of breath myself, and I'd better not be, because I have a couple of important things to say. First, I want to talk to you about the well-known importance of good grooming in every man's everyday life. That's one reason why so many men make a habit of finishing every shave with Old Spice after shave lotion. Once you've tried Old Spice lotion, I'm sure it'll become a part of your daily grooming you'll never want to miss. But that's only one reason for using Old Spice lotion. Another big reason is the wonderfully cool and comfortable feeling it gives your face when you finish shaving. There are two generous sizes of this quality lotion, a dollar and a dollar seventy-five. Look for the handsome red Old Spice cartons at drug and department stores everywhere. And remember, Father's Day is June 18th. To give Dad that top-of-the-world feeling on Father's Day, give him Old Spice. Everything Dad can want for real shaving comfort and pleasure. Old Spice aftershave lotion, shaving creams, talcum, cologne, and soap in handsome sets priced from $1.50 to $6. Now, back to deep water, the high adventure story of a man who found a treasure ship in danger waiting on the bottom of the ocean. And told here by that man, Mark Johnson. They got the air down to me in time and brought me to the surface. Liz said if Harry hadn't acted as fast as he did, the accident might have been more serious. But was it an accident? I didn't know. Liz had checked that pump before I went down. If it had been empty, surely she'd have noticed it. But she didn't say anything more about it, and I wasn't going to bring the subject up. I couldn't afford to be wrong. Liz suggested that we head back to port and have a doctor check me over. I told her I'd be all right, but she wouldn't listen. It took us two days to get back to Puerto Plata, and they made me stay in my bunk the whole time. By the time we made port, I was feeling fine, but Liz insisted that I stay on board while she went for the doctor. A half hour after she left, Paulson said he wanted to take a look at his boat and left me alone. I waited for an hour, then I got restless and headed up to Joe's. Hello, Jose. Jose? Huh? Oh. You do not want to joke, eh? You are tired, see? Oh, I'm okay. Senor Paulson said you are sick. No, I'm okay. You want a drink, see? Yeah, give me whiskey. Okay. You see, Paulson? See. How long ago? Oh, maybe half hour. He talked to the boss. Huh? He talked to the boss. What boss? Whiskey, senor. What boss, Jose? Man, what on the boat? What boat? Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, Chris Crab? See. Si. You mean that's not Paulson's boat? <laughs> no, 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 senor. Hmm. You do not drink? Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Senora's medicament, she's ready. What? Senora's med <coughs> medicament. Liz didn't order any medicine? See, si, Senor Paulson, he came this morning and wanted medicament for Senora. Must be a mistake. 
No. Not mistake, you see, senora, come later. Let me see it. It's all wrapped. Let me see it. Okay. It's all wrapped. Must be a mistake. No. Medicament, you see. And senor, the wrapping. Veronal, 10% barbitoric acid. This is poison. See? Why? Maybe, maybe... Listen, Joe, uh-huh. I think this is a mistake. Liz doesn't want this stuff, but I gotta know. Uh, no, he's not. I want you to wrap this up again, you understand? See? Don't say anything to Liz when she comes in. See? Now see. hurry up. I'll prove it was a mistake. Uh, you see, <coughs> Jose is not wrong. You all right, Mark? Yeah, I'm okay. Well, when you weren't at the boat, we thought you might have gotten sick. I just got restless. Well, the doctor's down at the What dock. took you so long? Well, uh, he was out on a call when I got there. Uh-huh. That's right. I ran into Liz outside his office. I believe you. Come on, Mark. I don't like to keep him waiting. Sure. You want to pick up anything while we're here? Can't think of anything, can you? Nope. See you, Joel. I sure like that sled of yours, Paulson. Oh, thanks. Maybe we can take a spin in her before we shove off. Yeah, maybe. Say she's good for about the... What's the matter? You two go ahead. Huh? Just remembered I want to get some eggs at Joe's. I'll catch up to you. Everything fell into place, but none of it made any sense unless... unless they'd known each other before. It didn't seem possible that Liz could... Yet they say under the right circumstances as anybody is capable of murder. I had to be sure. I had to be. The doc checked me over and said I was in perfect shape. Paulson was anxious to get back to the wreck, so we shoved off that afternoon. That night, I got out of my bunk while Liz was asleep, found the poison in her locker, and threw it overboard. When I got back in the bunk, I lay there listening to the water slapping against the hull, thinking it all over. I decided there was only one thing to do. First dive I made, I'd pretend I was in trouble and call topside for help. If Liz came down, I'd know I was wrong. If she didn't, it'd be too late to do anything about it anyway. When we got out to the wreck, Paulson suggested I make the first dive. Liz was handling my lines, and I knew it wouldn't be long. That's 75, Mark. Right. How do you feel? I'm okay. Don't rush. Start slacking off. Right. Hold it. What's the matter? Coming down alongside the wreck. Move me over about 30 feet. Which way? South. Right. A little more. Right. That's got it. Now, lower away. Nope. I'm aboard. Where'd you land? Right amidships. I'm working my way aft. Watch your lines. Yeah. How you doing? I'm getting that. There's a hatch here. It's jammed. There, I got it. I'm going in. Now. What, Mark? The line's fouled. What? Line's fouled in the rigging. Can you work them loose? No. No. Help me, Liz. Harry Mark's in trouble. Help me. You gotta go down. Liz. I'm gonna leave your phone for a minute, Mark. Hang on. Yeah. Well, that's that. He's on his way. Yeah. I'm going to switch over you over to his phone, Mark. Can you hear me? I hear you. I'm coming down your lines. Hang on. Yeah. It won't take me a minute. I know. I got 50 feet already. That's 75, Harry. Right. More real is. Hurry. Start slacking off. Right. I'm over the wreck, Mark. Yeah. Bottom. Where are you? Aft. Check. Find him. I see him. Over here, Paulson. Let me help you, Mark. Hmm? Is he all right? Let me... No, no. No, you don't. Let go my line. What? I'll get him free. Yes. What are you doing? Let go my line. Uh, it's better. Now, Paulson. Mark. 
I can't get up. See how you like it. Get away. What's the matter? Let go of my lines. Fun, huh? Here, please. Here. Stop it. How's it feel? Stop it. Don't. Here. Mark. One nice signal. Bring us up. Help me with this lid. Yes. There. Will it be all right? There. He'll be okay. What happened? Maybe your guest will tell you. Come on, Paulson. Snap out of it. My wreck. Mine. What? You can't have my wreck. Nobody wants it. What's he saying? Open your eyes. That's better. Now look at me. Why did you do it? My wreck. I found it two years ago. No more money. He had a boat. It wasn't his. Well, go on. How do you how to use your gear? Then when we found the wreck, it tried to kill you. What do you mean? Turn turned off the pump. It wasn't out of gas. No. Just turned it off. But she came out. Yeah. What about the poison? She made me promise not to tell. Paulson. Not to tell what, Liz? He saw me going to the doctors. Doctors? Remember the time I blew up? Yeah. I didn't feel well after that. As soon as we got back to port, I went to the doctor. He said I'd strain my heart badly. Heart? Yeah. That's why I wanted someone else along, so if anything happened to you, I... he said I couldn't dive again. That's why you went off by yourself? Yes. The medicine was for you? The sedative. Harry knew about it. He must have been afraid to have it on board. First night out, he stole it. Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? I couldn't. I knew how much you love excitement and fun, and I didn't want to spoil it. Honey. He said I had to be very careful. I might last 50 years or five minutes. That's not fun. I wanted so much Let's to get be... this scow back to port. No more diving for treasure? Oh, there's nothing down there worth having. It's all up here, honey. Is it? Come on. We got about 50 years of rocking to do. Water, a story of one thrilling moment in a man's life that can only be called High Adventure. As Mark Johnson, you heard John Larkin with Connie Lemke, Maurice Tuplin, and Ross Martin. The High Adventure Orchestra was conducted by Lou Davies. Until next week, when you can again hear High Adventure as part of the new hour and a half of Mystery and Adventure on NBC, this is George Hogan saying, wherever you are, those around you live it. And perhaps you yourself will meet it someday. We call it High Adventure. Now, here's special news. Introducing new Scholten Shampoo in the unbreakable plastic bottle. New Scholten Shampoo has an up-to-the-minute formula which leaves hair wonderfully clean, dandruff-free, easy to manage. And ladies, new Scholten Shampoo actually gives your hair beautiful additional luster. And here's a real shampoo first. Scholten Shampoo leaves hair pleasantly scented with Old Spice. New Scholten Shampoo in the unbreakable bottle bears the good housekeeping guarantee seal. On sale now at drug and department stores everywhere. Stay tuned for the third big mystery, The Big Guy, on NBC.